Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm uh, here to have a bit of a chat about uh, an app uh, I wrote in Swift Dialog, oh, called Swift Dialog, which is written in Swift and Swift UI. Um, so I've got a bit of a, a slide deck, which is uh, sort of ripped off by another talk that I've got, but I'll just go through the basics of uh, sort of how it started. Um, and what it does, and then we'll jump in the chat in the um, the Q and A, and we'll uh, have a chat about uh, what and why's and questions, and do a bit of Q and A and stuff like that. So yeah, let's get started. Um, so yeah, so inspiration sort of popped up, you know, ten pm one night as it does uh, to uh, to write this app. It's it's kind of been one of my um, uh, bugbears with uh, with sort of you know Mac OS presenting information to users. Um, and uh, in the past, I've used, uh, you know, Apple Swift Objective-C Bridge to, to build little apps to create sort of progress bars and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, and one night, uh, I decided to give it a crack. Um, I'm sort of uh, basing it off the experience that Eric Gomez had with uh, Nudge. Um, Swift Dialog and Nudge sort of share a bit of code uh, and a bit of uh, the history together and stuff that I learn in, in Swift UI using Swift Dialog, I contribute back into Nudge. So there's a few other bits and pieces there. Um, so yeah, so this thing went live uh, a bit over a year ago. So March last year, um, I put the first version up uh, and it looked pretty basic initially, but it sort of did what I wanted it to do. Um, so the, the main features there is just, you know, Having a, having a dialogue that can show a title and a message and a OK button and have it say it in the way that I want it to look. Um, yeah, and uh, I did manage to get it open source. So it's on my GitHub. Um, I got the clearance through uh, my employer to, to make it go live. Um, so this is the quick one, what it does. Um, so yeah, so it's a, it's an app that displays macOS dialogs. Um, can be used to uh, you know get user input, uh, trigger custom events. Um, it's all called from the from a uh, command line. Um, uh, there's a a pretty rich um, list of uh, command line arguments uh, that you can pass it in to to make it uh, look the way you want it. It's about sixty different options, or actually over sixty at this stage. Uh, supported on Mac OS 11 or later because it's, it's written in uh, the Swift UI version that uh, Swift UI version 2 that came with uh, Mac OS 11. Um, so it's like an example of one of the kind of kind of things that I'm using it for. So it's just a little bit of a you know uh, a reminder to to you know do a survey at work. Um, another one is just a little bit of different kind of layout. Um, just sort of these these sort of pop up reminders that I push out. Um, some other people are using it for, you know, doing, you know, um, information about how to do migrations, uh, that kind of stuff. And there's people even using it for onboarding, uh, which is pretty cool, actually. Um, over in the uh, the channel over on Slack, there's, uh, there's a, quite a few people doing some pretty cool stuff with it now. Um, Shift UI by itself. Uh, sorry, Swift Dialog by itself doesn't have any brains at all. It's it's literally just a display thing. It, it just displays whatever you tell it. Um, so it, it doesn't really have any knowledge about log files or or reading sort of you know other formats or anything like that. So yeah, it's basically whatever you can provide in a shell script is what it'll do. Um, so yeah, so we've got some command line arguments. Uh, we can do the basics. One is uh, just layout title message. Um, the format it just takes the form uh, option name and argument um, there's a help built-in help so you can pull it up um, the four main areas of the dialogue that you can modify title um, icon uh, which i'll get to why it's called icon and not sort of something else but uh, icon message area and down the bottom there's a button bar uh, the title uh, obviously you can just make it say whatever you want so here we go welcome to active ops yvr 2022 Hopefully there's no spelling errors in this. Um, a message can also be updated. So it's just, again, it's just you call with the message parameter and just stick in a message and then off you go. Uh, kiss approach looks good. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> I've got the chat up open on the other window. Um, 
buttons. Uh, there's three buttons built in, um, button one, two, and three, and they give an exit code of zero uh, for button one. Uh, so obviously if you click OK, then you know, your script can go, everything's good. Otherwise you can detect an error exit code of two or three, and that'll tell you which button the user pushed. Um, buttons can have labels of any length that you want. So uh, up to the width of the dialog window itself. Um, so yeah, there's no limitations on, on how much text you can actually have in your button. And this was kind of a uh, an issue I had with the, the other app that I was using at the time, which was um, uh, a couple of years ago, Jamf Helper. So um, being a Jamf customer, so yeah. Um, icon, now the reason why it's called Icon is because um, I sort of based the original layout off Jamf Helper. So, um, you know, a lot of the terminology and stuff that I was using for that, I sort of just threw into this. I just wanted to make a dialogue that looked, um, you know, the way that, uh, that, that I wanted it to look. Um, so yeah, so we can update the, the dialogue here. So, you know, in this case, I've got the Mac DevOps sort of logo. Um, you can just sort of chuck it up. There are some built-in ones. So there's uh, like, you know, warning, caution, and info. Um, these are just uh, rendering built um, specified uh, Apple SF symbols. Um, you can actually, uh, instead of like the keyword, you can actually pass in like SF equals and type in the SF symbol name and it'll display that as well. Uh, we can get to that in a little bit. Um, you can pull in the icon from an application path. So for example, the system preferences app or you can pull it in from a preference pane. And I wrote this slide when the preference panes were still called preference panes and not system. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, hopefully they're still called preference pane bundles, but uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, you can also pull the icon from a uh, URL. So in this case, we're pulling it directly from the Mac DevOps uh, WordPress. Hopefully there wasn't too many clicks on while I was demoing this uh, slide to myself. <laughs> Um, and there's overlays. So um, overlay is just a, a little icon in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the of the the main icon, um, and it takes all the same arguments uh, as the as sort of the main icon. So you can pass in an FS symbol, or you can pass in an image. Um, there is um, if if you're passing in SF symbols, there is a default um, background because not all FS symbols look good um, with background, but you can turn that off. Uh, that covers the basics. Um, there are a whole bunch of other things we can do, uh, which I'll jump into quickly. So you can select a different font uh, and font color and font size for the title. Um, so uh, you can you know recolor it to your your own organizational colors and fonts and stuff like that. Um, it will if the font doesn't exist in your system, it will uh, default back to the uh, standard. I think it's um. SF Pro, I think is the default font. Um, <laughs> the message area takes Markdown. Um, so this is using a, it's not using Apple's uh, Markdown. It's using a uh, Markdown library called um, Markdown UI. Uh, it uses a common mark spec. Um, most things work. Um, tables do not, um, as James found out. Um, you can actually use Markdown to add in images and links. Um, obviously here we've got some new lines and some bold text and I've used a, a, a title down the bottom. So um, you can also chuck in a banner image. Um, so if you don't want an icon and you want an image up top instead, um, then you can put in the banner image. Uh, and a recent change actually, which was made after I made these slides is you can have an image and if you want to, you can actually display an icon as well. So. You can uh, blame Brad Chapman for that request. Uh, speaking of images, um, you can just display, um, uh, use, use the dialog to display a, a full image. Um, and the image can have a caption underneath. Um, if you specify multiple images, um, then you get this carousel view. So there's like the little uh, chevrons down the bottom there where you can go forward and back. Um, you can make the uh, images auto rotate. So you can say specify every five seconds, change to the next image, and then it'll just loop through all the images. 
is welcome an inside joke. Uh, sorry, Graham, it's probably just a typo. <laughs> uh, as you'll, if you're anyone that knows me, I typo all the time. Um, you can also display videos, um, and you can display the video and also have it autoplay if you desire. Um, so you can do it locally or via URL. Um, we don't do, or it doesn't do YouTube video, so you can't you know, you pass, pass in a YouTube video link um, yet. Um, but if you have the direct URL to a video, then you can chuck that in, it'll play that as well. Um, so that's the basics around formatting, how, the, how it looks. Um, we've also got some window behavior stuff. Um, and so uh, we can do things like let the user click and drag the window around the screen. Um, have it forced on top of other windows. You can have arbitrary sizes of the window and you can display it in a few specific positions on the screen when it launches. Uh, and there's a cool full screen option and a blur desktop option. Um, user input. Um, we've got some drop, drop down boxes, check boxes, text fields, um, and we've got ways to retrieve that input and throw it back into your calling script. So we'll just have a bit of a look how that looks. Uh, drop downs are just uh, obviously just a um, drop down, <laughs> obviously. Um, and you can have as many of those as you want, um, as they'll fit. Uh, check boxes, same thing. Um, you can have as many of those as you want. Um, and you can have them pre-checked or you can even have them checked and, and disabled. So the user sees that an option is enabled, but can't change it. Um, text entry. Um, you can have one or more text entry areas. Um, in macOS 12, you can have a prompt. So that's where you have the sort of slightly grayed out into your response here sort of text. So that's in macOS 12 only. macOS 11 doesn't do that. In Swift UI. Um, and the fields, if you want, can be marked as um, private, um, which will turn into a password field. Um, or you can have it as a required field, which means that the uh, the dialog won't dismiss unless that field has actually been entered. Um, new feature since this slide was made is uh, you can have a, a regex. You can specify a regex so that uh, the what is entered in the field needs to match a particular pattern before the dialog can be dismissed. So, for example, you might want to, um, you know, if you've got a specific format for um, like a serial number or something like that that you need someone to enter in. Um, it spits out in one of two formats. So one is just the, it just spits out a, a sort of like a text-based format. The other one is you can specify to dump it out in JSON format. Um, so you can read that back in using a JSON parser in your script. Um, so more advanced stuff, even more advanced stuff, goodness me. There's a Jamf helper mode. Um, so as I said before, I based Swift Dialog kind of on the, the way that Jamf helper works. Um, and what that lets me do is um, uh, take Jamf Helper's uh, user input and and use it in a Swift dialog in instead. So it's just a, a simple command line option that lets you do that. Uh, we can also do JSON files for input, list, progress, and command files. And I'll show you how that works. So the Jamf Helper mode, it's not, it doesn't do every single option, um, but it will. Um, take the basics. So you can, if you're already using Jamf Helper in a workflow, then you can sort of tell it to use Swift Dialog instead uh, and then see how it looks and then adjust it as you need. Um, if you don't like having big long lists of command line options in your scripts, then you can stick it all into a JSON file and, and uh, read it in that way. And the JSON file looks like that. It's all the exact same options as you would use on the command line. Um, except uh, we're now just specifying in a JSON file. There are some um, special ones which are documented on the wiki um, and are documented in the inbuilt help uh, around how, uh, how the JSON comes in. For example, with the image, you can actually create that as an array and have an array of images, um, that kind of stuff. And the same with anything else where you can have multiple options of. YAML, no, I don't like YAML, sorry. <laughs> We can chat about why I don't like YAML, especially for this application. Um, so actually, that's a, that's a good question, actually. Um, so um, where are we? 
so I've got this option JSON file. I've also there's a there's a companion um, command line option called uh, JSON string, uh, and you can just pass in the JSON as a complete one line string uh, on the command line, and that sort of doesn't work that well with YAML. So sorry. Um, so this option is the one that sort of like has become pretty popular in the last sort of few months, and it's uh, it's lists. Um, Seems pretty basic. Uh, it's just an item with uh, or just or just a list of items, but it's how people are using it. It's pretty cool. Um, we've added in um, some standard uh, status uh, icons that you can display. There's also a status text area, so you can put in a piece of text to say whatever you want. Um, and this is kind of an example of the of the different type of uh, JSON format for specifying those things. So you can specify what your title is your status and this is all like a um an initial setting um we can of course um update things as dialogue is running so there's a uh, command file and a command file format that can uh, be accepted and you can just throw in, in in commands and it updates stuff now if the command file uh <laughs> if the command file Sort of format seems familiar. Um, I ripped it straight out of VP Notify. <laughs> um, so thanks, Joel. Um, there's a, actually there's, there's, a, there's a few sort of bits and pieces which I've sort of borrowed from here and there. And if I have borrowed from, I've always uh, given attribution in the code or and or asked whoever the original developer was. Um, another one, obviously, progress bar. This is what I originally wanted to do. Um, was uh, Sort of do progress bars for scripts. So back when I was using uh, the um, was it Apple Script Objective C bridge. Um, so yeah, I've got a little lightning talk that I did in uh, 2017 around that. Um, and of course, we can just pass in you know progress values, and it'll update the progress bar as needed. Um, so yeah, so people can do sort of dynamic content, and they can do things like this, where they sort of show some sort of you know setup option where it's doing stuff um kind of looks pretty cool um so yeah that's it um it's available on jeff marketplace if you're on the jeff marketplace um there's also a uh, github wiki uh there's a, a github for um some example scripts uh, which i sort of update every so often and of course there's a swift dialogue channel on mac and slack